Hello everybody, welcome to the official cast of the Group P Round 1 match between Alan76 and his Undead up against Niagara and his Wood Elves. Um, this is a very unstandard Undead build, unstandard Undead. I, I thought of that, I thought I was clever and then, and then couldn't remember the second word. Um, yes, he's only got two ghouls. That means he's got the fourth reroll. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure he'll be the only person in this competition with two girls. Like, you know, four girls is incredible. Girls are the best player on the team, arguably, even better than mummies. Um, we've got guards on the mummies, a guard on one of the whites, and strip ball on the other white. So, very strange. He did win the toss and choose to receive, though, so fair play for that. Cheering friends, friends with the ref. Was the uh, that means he can argue the corner five plus and might be able to foul a little bit more. He's got thirteen players and many zombies, so I guess he'll be. He's also got skeletons. Look, he's taken some skeletons. I guess to make up for the fact that he hasn't got ghouls. It's not what I would do, but there you go. And then um, Niagara Chalice regular has gone for the tree. 11 players, Apple, two re-rolls. The third is coming from this throw with leader. Two wrestle, on, uh, sorry, two dodge, only one wrestle because he's upgraded the uh, dancer to a mighty blow dancer. And of course, the strip ball dancer. You have to have a strip ball dancer, basically. So, uh, quite nice, quite a nice color scheme as well. I quite like the uh, wood elves here. He does have whites, yeah. The whites have got guard and strip ball, yeah. Yeah, that was a nice kick. Yeah, it's you know if if elves get this kick against undead, they really should win the game. Honestly, that's like it's basically an auto win at this point. Like you know, if somebody if the elves don't win the game after this kick, they've got serious problems. And like the whole the whole turn for Alan should have been trying to you know mitigate. This is as much as possible what an absolute disaster this kick was. And um, I don't feel like he's done enough. Like it was hard to do enough, but I don't think he's done enough. And I think he's going to be in a lot of trouble next turn. He's got four re-rolls. Stood in the tree there. I mean, it's... It's all right. It's all right. Uh, the the main the the problem that you have is the nine wood elves that are coming for your ball. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see though. We'll see what happens. Yeah, this is who I would have blitzed as well. I presume he's going to blitz him, seeing as he's uh, based him. It'd be very strange to base him and not blitz him, wouldn't it? Only two catches, and uh, just left them rookie. Rookie, as Dimmy G says. Yeah, this is the danger zone. Like, this area is the danger zone because this is the area that the elves can get to, essentially. And uh, he hasn't filled this area. He's got a line in front of it and a line behind it. And, uh, yeah, this is the this like this kind of box, if you like, is the area I think you feel you have to defend, right? You have to defend this area to keep the elves out of it and to give your player, you know, space to move into it next turn. And uh, he hasn't done that. And we might see the elves intersect this. Hello, Fluffy Burrito. Hello, anybody else I didn't say hello to. Sorry, it's. Uh, yeah. It's not always too easy to uh, keep up with everything.
dipping into the time bank here, but I mean, this is a pretty critical turn, right? He really wants to make this as difficult as possible for the undead to reconnect the, the uh, what did it, what did uh, Di Dio call this? The, uh, the stabilization phase, isn't it? You know, this is pretty critical. He really wants to stop them getting together. Oh, stack the double dodge. I'm not sure about stacking them. I think I would have done the first one. And then if I pop dodge, just come down to here, right? And then, like, this guy could have done a GFI something to get to there. Rush. I would have also just taken this guy around there as well, honestly. I know he's kept a couple of people in front, but... You know, this 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 ghoul isn't going to pass to this guy or anything. So there's one player in the way. Um, stopping, like, the double GFI reconnect. Rush. Stopping the double rush reconnect. So I imagine we'll see a double rush reconnect. Is this an Xbox burn American? Wow, Timmy. You're so mean, but uh, I do think he's a consoler, yep. Um, <laughs> now, that, now that you say it. Um, <laughs> Alan76 is Great Britain or UK. Oh, it's UK Great Britain. I don't know which one it is. UK, I guess. Gateway to Glory he qualified from, I believe, PlayStation. And uh, Niagara qualified through BB Tactics Big Crunch Playoff and is Swedish so there you go it's so only gets a push There's got to be some kind of chain on here, right? Even if he makes these rushes. It might only be one rush, yeah, only one rush. There is only one wrestler for the Woodies. Ooh, I think one forward is just better, right? Because he can still hit him and then hit the ball. Fails the take root and the stand up. Well done, Tree. Cosmic. I mean, he could just surf the zombie there, but I'm sure he'll want to be going for the ball somehow, right? Uh, so he just goes for a mighty blow, bang. If that's going to be the case, and I wonder if surfing a zombie for sure would have been better. But... Yeah, maybe he's going to try and dodge all the elves away and reset. Maybe he's thought better of it. Everybody being based and just thought there was no... There was no in with like dodges or chain pushes or anything. I mean, there was definitely a way to get an uphill on the ball. But. It wasn't super easy to get 1Ds, was it?
it would definitely play in the ball yeah but you know if they're if they're too low percentage then not bothering and retreating is completely fine isn't it Stacks the stacks the double dodge again, and just leaves his wrestler to his fate. I'm not sure about that. I think a three-two is completely reasonable for that wrestler, and now he's just going to get three D mauled by Mighty Blow. Um, or or he could uh, chain the mummy forward to three D the catcher, I guess. Or he can just not chain him forward. And not 3D with him. I, so I guess he would need to move him somewhere. I don't know. I think punching things with three dice of Mighty Blow is very good. Very, very good. Just about the best thing you can do, actually. Yeah, the, I, I don't know. I mean, I, honestly, I think that was a... Uh, I'm okay with letting the pressure go here, honestly, I, I think. The fact that he, you know, like... I, I, honestly, I would have put the catcher next to the guy who got blitz, right, to make it harder for him to, to reconnect. I'm surprised that he made it so easy for him to reconnect. But once he's reconnected, I understand just uh, letting it go there. Oh, not... Oh, dear. <laughs> so, we've got an instant uphill on the ball with Strip if we want. That is not a cage. So, yeah. Oh no, oh no. I don't think there's really a way to get a Wandy on the ball though, right? So he might still turn this down as again, honestly. I don't see a way to get a Wandy. Yep. Just mighty blow bang. Get your bangings in. Just stay conservative. Trust that you'll get another chance later. Well, the thing is, the thing is, Captain Oates, it's, it's, if you think you'll get a better chance later, right? Maybe, maybe he thinks he will. I guess this is still a great situation for the Woodies, right? They haven't taken any damage. Still got their apple. Still got eleven players. They're in no no danger whatsoever. Tree's very relevant. The mummies have got a long way to go to get like away from the tree and do something good. Well, not if you think you can get better, Captain Notes. No. And like, you know, you've got if you've got to commit players that can then die and stuff. So you know, ideally you want to wait later in the half, don't you? So that if it doesn't work, you don't get pounded on for like another four more turns.
I mean, yes, that, that's the thing. That's the thing. The thing is, if you think you'll get more chances, right? If this was against K Fog, I think I'd be taking that. Um, but I can understand not taking it and just, you know, keeping your shape and hoping you get a better chance. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm old-fashioned caution. A boomer, if you will. It's not for me. People who enjoy that sort of thing, good for them, but it's not for me. This is quite a... Uh, Quite a, quite a nice little move in here, isn't it? The, all the guards together, all three guards together. Um, not so easy to do anything. You could start with it uphill on the mummy. And if it works, then you can get in for a 1D on the ball. But... Uh, Uphilling with a war dancer isn't particularly great, is it? 30% to face plant with your best player is not great. No, I, I don't, it won't. I don't think it'll leap in. I think you, you uphill the mummy, which you then get to hit with a tree and pow. And then you can punch this guy. And, uh, you know, push him to there. And then you can cancel this guy and you can 1D the ball. That would be the way to get a 1D strip, but he's going to push him back into the uh, tree. But that that's like risking your dancer on a 30% down, isn't it? Which is, and then also like destroying your position on a, essentially a 1 in 9, which is not, not great, is it? So I, I don't blame him for not going for that, but it was a, it was a possibility. <laughs> yes, but really, I'll try and turn it off. I'll try and leave it on for the first few turns and then take it off so that people can, like, you know, who aren't used to them can then get used to them over the first few turns, right? Or, like, periodically put them on so people can get a handle of where things are. So yeah, just health screening here. And now he's just going to beat him off and move the other one back. You can't keep spending two L's to fight one zombie, can you? <laughs> it's not a great trade for you. There we go, fail dodge. A few dice rolls that turn, and I uh, did get the fail. So I can just do the same thing next turn, right? Just blitz forward with a mummy uh, or a white. And uh, just keep trying to push forward. Little by little, hope that there's a snake or a, you know, reroll burn. Yeah, exactly, Truk, exactly, yeah. I don't I don't think it is, man. I think it's completely fine to, to wait for the ball sack, yeah. Like, my game, my game versus you, right, Truk? Like, um, I was loath to base the mummies, right? Like, I had to go for the ball turn one, uh, you know, with the, the deep kick and that, so I had to go, I had to be going all about the ball, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to base mummies for eight turns, did I? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> it's tough, so... It's a lot safer just to walk away like this and uh, and then go for the ball later in the later in the half. Yeah, it should definitely foul. Yeah, it should definitely be fouling. He's got he's got thirteen players, and he's got only got two ghouls, so you know he should be fouling. I mean, he's not hitting with mum with. Uh, wait, okay, he is going to hit with the mummy this time. Doesn't get the power. Mm. 
Makes the zombie dodge. Can't reach him for the foul, but yeah, I would have liked to have seen a foul, Demi, I agree. It's very hard to beat the Woodies when they've you know still got eleven players. It's pretty much hard to beat them at any time. But especially when they've got eleven players. Jimmy G just wants his orcs to punch elves in the head. Yeah. Don't even play orcs. Well, you said the thing though, Dimi, so, you know. This guard's pretty annoying for Niagara, otherwise blitzing the mummy into the tree would have been great, wouldn't it? But as it is... How can you not though? How can you not, Dimmy? It's a, it's a fantasy game played by humans and that is the reality of the world we live in, isn't it? Mm, so puts him in there. I guess that means he's not going to re-roll any of these dodges. Oh, it was a catch. Oh, God. I don't know what's where. I think he should have done that dodge first then, probably. No blitz whatsoever. Maybe he could have 1D blitz this line, all right. Or, or this guy who dodged, maybe he could have 1D blitz instead, but then... Who knows? Well, he can just about get into range here just by blitzing and mashing in again. I won't hate it, honestly. Like he should just just get into range, right? If he uh, say blitzes this one, and then he has, he'll have the ball back there. But then next turn he, he can move another one forward and get in range. So yeah, he can get into just get into range by blitzing and mashing in full pow, lovely pow, and a Kaz. 10 L's, turn 6. Excitement! Woo! Apple goes because it was a badly hit. Was it a badly hit? No. It was a badly hit. So. Makes sense to apple that. So you know if there's if there's a dub if if there's a snake eyes on a dodge or anything, he can get through for free right now, can't he? All he's got to do is just keep the ball safe, and then next turn he'll he'll at least have a chance to uh, to score on turn eight. I don't like going directly behind yet. I would have got directly behind on turn seven. Because now this does open you up to like potential chains and stuff. But. We shall see. What 
Niagara thinks of this. A few things he can do, isn't he? He can, he can try some chains, he can try uh, up hills, he can try 1Ds and try to unlock something. Or he can just scream again and hope that he doesn't fail any 1 in 36 dodges. He's only got three players free to scream with and everything else is a 1 in 36. So it looks like we are going for the carry on screening strat. Double one here is going to be pretty disastrous for the defence. Yeah, you have to dodge this guy. I, I mean, this looked like he was going to scream, so I thought he'd have gone back there. He's making a mighty blow hit. This seems pretty bad, right? This is taking away three, maybe four people away from the screen. Adds in another one in 36. And then fails a one in 36. That was always allowed. And now we have a very easy block and blitz into a Pretty secure cage downfield. Will he have columns on turn seven, Captain Not. That's the big question. I really didn't like that blitz. That was that was just adding more. Basically, it added more one in thirty six fails, and reduced the reduced the screens right like that. This dodge, he could have been here, then he could have been. There's one over here for free somewhere, and that dodge could have still failed, but um, he would have at least had a, some kind of a screen. Gets the full pow on the uh, dancer, doesn't even hurt him, diced. Can definitely foul him though, uh, Skellington can run up there and foul him. Doesn't get to go too far forward, does he? Unfortunately, he has got re rolls, so you know maybe he could make some rushes to get ahead here. Does get the knockdown? If only he had two more ghouls, indeed, Dimmy. Yes, I mean this is the thing, right? Like, to be fair, those ghouls would have been targeted by Mighty Blow Dancer. Um, but yeah, I wonder if he should be trying some rushes here to get a bit more through. So he could he could actually yeah he could he could cage here right this guy can get to there oh no this guy's based he can't go with him so double GFI and then he does a single one oh he should have probably got the ball into range before moving this fella so now he's going to go down there. This is a bit dodgy. Yeah, it's not going to be safe. It should have been. It should have been. It, could, it would have been like three GFIs. Rushes. It could have been three rushes, but it could have been safe. I mean, as safe as anything is against a war dancer, but...
Yes, that was that was indeed. I didn't want to say it beforehand, but yes, ball carrier blitz was indeed the way forward there. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Because he's defenseless, right? The the reason that ball carrier blitzes are not so much that you might one in twelve nine six. It's the fact that, you know, if they've got block and you won in nine now you're stuck on them is the main thing, right? Or if you don't get a knockdown and, and then, you know, you can't get away through, things like that. But when this is defensive, pl defenseless player like this, it's only a 1 in 36 that it's a bad thing. And also it's only like a 1 in 12, 9, 6 really that it's bad. So that was absolutely a, uh, that was absolutely a ball carrier blitz situation. Yep. Not fouling either, not fouling the strip dancer. But you know, um, at least it's dice to get him. I wonder if Niagara's regretting not going for the ball earlier in the half. Yes, I mean, the 1D is incredibly easy, right? It's just to dodge with dodge and then 1D and with nothing. But I don't think I don't think you'll be happy with that. I think you'll try and get something better. How oh, much better though? Like look how costly the splits was for him. And I, I know he won in thirty six, but still it just took two players out of doing anything. It took two players out of relevancy. That blitz. No, oh. <laughs> though it did get him a Kaz, <laughs> and regen fails. No, um, one reroll. Alan rerolled the pickup. Um, he's got he had he had four because he's only got two. He's only got two ghouls. Yeah, mighty blow dancers. They're pretty good, right? They're pretty. They are pretty good, honestly. Whether it's better than, you know, a sidestep or frenzy, who knows. So dipping at a time bank again, Niagara here. Does he even re-roll it? He does. I mean, his one turn isn't very good, right, without sidestep, so... And versus strength five is with guard. So we're going for the leap and run around. Or run through. On just one day, okay. If honestly, if if you're gonna go to all this trouble, <laughs> three, four, five, six, you could have just done the dodge there and made it a two D, right? But he rerolls, gets the push, gets the strip. Yeah, I guess he really wanted the ball in the crowd, didn't he? Now he puts the guy in scoring range. Good to remember which turn of the drive it is. I managed to not do that and didn't have a scoring threat. This is a pass action. Rolls all the dice. Mummy intercept, maybe. Oh, you rolled a five, it's accurate. So we've just got a six for the intercept. Oh, well, interference. He does not interfere with it. And... 
Yeah. <laughs> Should have fouled the dancer. Yes, caution. Yes. If, like, there was a two assist foul on that dancer, absolutely had to foul the dancer. Yep. And there you go. That's why he didn't go for the ball sack earlier. Um, weird. Well, I'm not saying Butty used a lot of time bang. I'm saying, you know, like, it, it was worth it, wasn't it? That's what it's there for, you know? He, he used all of his time there and played a great turn and got the ball up away, completely safe, and uh, probably won the game. Shut up, help me. It is why I chose elves, though I chose the wrong elves, didn't I? I chose, I chose dark elves, which can't really do this like what elves can. Um, but yeah. I mean, we could surf three players here, couldn't we? Or two. Could surf two players. Probably should. Because God knows you're not stopping the skull, so you might as well just serve some players. But yeah, he should have fouled the dancer, yeah. Yeah, he should have fouled the dancer. But you know, he found the right play, didn't he, Niagara? You know, he got the ball, dice in the ball. And the, th the throw was there to get it and stuff, so. have to surf the dancer here by the way it's literally the law he had to he had to surf him before but by god does he have to foul him no 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 <laughs> no what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> he had to assist here right and punch him and then bring in the guard and then punch him and then surf him like you just have to you just have to you have to surf. You have to surf the dancer. Oh, he's rushing to tag the ball. Hoping for a 1 in 36 to stop the touchdown. Well, I'd rather go for surfing the dancer, to be honest. I guess he's going to try both, isn't he? He's going to try both. Yeah, okay, he is going to try both. Because he does this surf first and then he dodges. But now he's got a dodge with a ghoul. So he can still try. Oh my god. Yeah, I didn't like I didn't like dodging with a ghoul. And you got really unlucky then anyway to 1 in 81 to not surf. <laughs> to not double surf. Um, but... I just didn't like relying on the ghoul dodge, right? I'd have I'd have done that blitz with the uh, with the strip baller. Strip baller running around and doing that is much better because it means you uh, you don't have to one in nine dodge. Because I would have definitely prioritised surfing the dancer. This does mean that he uh, gets his ghoul surfed as well. Which isn't great. Might as well. Oh, we yeah, get killed as well. Oh god. Oh god. Dead, dead, dead. <laughs> and then makes his dodging skulls. Well. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> well, now he's down to three ghouls. Oh, no, wait a minute. He's down to one ghoul. Um, still got 11 players. Yeah, no regen for the ghoul. Desperately unlucky, no regen. And, uh... 
yeah, it's still a full 11 for Niagara, so looking really, really, really grim. Really grim for Alan, but at least he can reroll things with his zombies, so you know, he can, uh, he can hopefully. You can roll a lot of dice, right? You can do loads of rushes and stuff. You can do loads of rushes, like, because he'll have to, right? Because his team's so slow. So, like, but at least he can do things like maybe get a one dice on the ball with a wrestle ghoul, maybe. Or the strip ball white, maybe get a 1D. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah, regen often works for the other guy. Uh, Ichigo Kuto. Yeah, I've seen regen work lots of times for my opponent. Many, many, many times. My oppo my opponents werewolves. Yeah, they'll always regen. My opponents mummies. Oh, every time. I don't like putting your mummies three squares away so they guarantee them not being able to blitz on turn one. But I guess he's got four rerolls so he can he can rush to blitz. Exactly, chicken. Zero for me, hundred for my opponents. That makes it fifty fifty, doesn't it? Absolutely horrible. <sighs> the funny thing is though, ghouls, I never see those region. Oh, a rain. Well, you know, maybe the owls will fail a pick up. Maybe the undead will do something. No, ghouls don't have regen, which is why, <laughs> which is why they never regen. <laughs> they don't fail, but never see them regen. It's weird, isn't it? He's obviously not going to follow here. Like, there's no way he's going to follow with any of these players, right? And it'll be that the dancer will blitz so that he can retreat, you know, away from rush. Getting rush blitzed. He doesn't blitz with a dancer. Ah, oh, I am shocked and appalled. Oh, he has blitzed it. I just didn't see the thing. Yeah, okay, he did blitz then. I literally didn't see the icon above his head when he made the block. That's so weird. Don't know if that was a visual bug or me being stupid, but um. You know, one of those things. I would not bet against me being stupid. Ooh, follows with a tree, opening himself up to a mummy blitz. Oh no, because the mummies are so far away, it's still a rush to blitz the tree anyway. for the undead, isn't it? But things can happen. I mean, you basically have to rush blitz with the mummy because you have to get lucky. So whether whether that's on the tree or a catcher or a lineman, wherever it is, you have to, you, you basically have to just, I think you just have to base everything up 
and hope for an early one in 36, which is you know, a terrible plan, but, well, it's a very low percentage chance to happen. But when it's the only way you win, it becomes the only possible plan, doesn't it? And I think that's where we're at. I think, I don't know if Alan agrees that that's how desperate this game is, but I think that's how desperate this game is. I think it's very, 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 very desperate. And uh, he has to get very lucky to escape with a draw here. I mean, the elves can just dodge everybody off, can't they? No problem. Can mighty blow blitz the bubby? And dodge the two away. Just very simple. Doesn't have to do anything, anything stressful. Just really easy drive here with no pressure on himself yet. Indeed, what he does straight in for the mighty blow blitz. Kills him. <laughs> Fails regen. Nice. Excitement. Didn't even need. Didn't even need mighty blow. By the way, just a smooth eleven ten. Would have cast a tree man. <laughs> yep, not bad. Yeah, I like getting that guy down as well. No. Oh. Well, I mean, this is. The, I mean, they're still. It's still very easy to hurt them, isn't it? You know, it's. You've got to protect them. You can't just let people punch your mummies. You know. Um, they're too valuable to lose. <laughs> I expect the buddies to get a free zombie. <laughs> Honestly, I did. I did, Steve. I'm not ashamed to admit. <laughs> when, <laughs> when the ghoul died, <laughs> I really thought for a second, oh, wow, the buddies are going to get a free zombie. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, well. Gets 3D here. And another cast. Oh my god. Well, nine players. Jesus. <laughs> this is horrific. <laughs> two knockdowns, two cars, not bad. So yeah, Alan hasn't had the best of luck this game. It's almost been a dicing, honestly. But, um... I also don't think he's given himself the best chance. Dead man. Yep, to me. There was excitement, trust me. No, it's I mean it's it's not over, but boy howdy, it's uh it's about as close to being over as it can be without it actually being over, isn't it? So he's got lots of options for a mighty blow blitz here. I know what I'd be doing, or trying to do, but there's also like, you know, big iron for playing safe and stuff, so we'll see if he, you know, 
he's got to balance the playing safe with the best payoff, payoff hasn't he? So maybe it's just best to go the absolute safest at this point. Like you're so far ahead right now. You're streets ahead at this point. So, you know, locking down and going really safe. There's something to be said for. But there's also something to be said for just, you know, still playing kind of normally and... Uh, And you know, giving yourself kind of better success states. Wow, that's crazy, Tuli. Imagine not having the flag. <laughs> I like Fred on. <laughs> Do like Fred on. Hello, machine. Yes, getting banged on by what else is the worst, isn't it? Another cast. <laughs> Excitement, mighty blow war dancer. Very good. What I would have really wanted to do, but wouldn't have done, is I would have wanted to start with this block and then blitz the white into the tree, right? With the mighty blow. But then you're, then you're risking a one in nine block and you've got a zombie behind your line and you'd have to just cage up here and you would be staying in one spot. So it was a lot easier to go take the 75% knockdown with Mighty Blow, come, come, come back to the middle, and uh, wouldn't have followed mind. Um, oh no, yeah, he, he was down, so yeah, followed was right, I was just sort of confused for a second. Um, so yeah, so like this is, this is a better success state, right? And less chance of failing as well, complete failure, because like you wouldn't have rerolled that one in nine block, I don't think. Um, so... It's one of those where I think I would have wanted to do this, but I would have probably done the same turn as him, you know, because it was it was safer. This was the safe turn that he went for. Um, but I think it's probably better to do to do the one in nine block first, and then blitz the white into the tree. I think it's it's probably better, but I think it's it's absolutely natural when you're this far ahead to go for the safer plays with like less payoff. Not going for the leader. In fact, just letting the leader punch somebody and uh, letting the mummy get punched by Mighty Blow. And I mean, yeah, this is looking pretty, pretty horrendous for the undead. Woo, he's not doing that. I would have definitely punched the mummy. Just quietly. Couldn't this guy get all... Yeah, this guy could have got all the way up so that he could have punched him. And then could have had two assists in there. Blitzed him. All up here. It would have all been very, uh, very good and safe. <laughs> didn't make a Kaz. I mean, it's difficult when you roll a push. But he didn't Kaz that zombie, so... That's great news for, for Alan. <laughs> Is he going to sideline cage the fact he's moved that guy there? No. Oh, he's going to move the leader downfield, maybe? Nah, you can't risk the handoff here. Absolutely, absolutely not the time to hand off, right? Like absolute dominance here. You cannot hand off. But you could have it down as a pretend scoring threat. Ah, yeah, 
so we're extending the screen out. And this one could come in and uh, block this guy. Blocking this guy is pretty good. It's better than getting blocked. Yeah, he's going to complete this weird screen, I guess. Can he get all the way there? No, he can get here though, which is good enough. No, he cuts the corner. Hate that. I, I actually hate the corner cut there. Like, yes, this is better than there, but it's not better by much. So just go there and don't make a 2+. plus. Yeah, Blood Bowl Dave is... Yeah. Blood Bowl 3 Sunday, yeah. Yeah, the time bank down to 2 minutes doesn't matter now, right? There, there should be no... Difficult, no more difficult turns for Niagara at this point. Like he can, he can choose to run it down to slightly optimize things, but he doesn't have any tough choices. So the play here is uh, is double dodge mummy blitz, right? Five plus six plus two D. That's uh, no other play. Well, incorrect in my opinion. I think the only thing he could do was a 5 plus 6 plus mummy blitz. Because it's the only way you win this game, right? Like, yes, it looks rubbish, right? And people would laugh at you for saying, what the hell, you're going to do a 5 plus 6 plus mummy blitz. But if it's the only way you win the game... It's the only way you win the game. So, you have to do it. Now we can just go back again, right? Just go back. Nobody's base except the mighty blow, really. So you run back here. Blitz, run everyone back. I think he forgot about this guy, he didn't move. Skellington as well, he could have based up there. Yep, unfortunately when... Uh, I mean, it was, the first half was interesting, wasn't it? But the second half was over pretty quickly, wasn't it? Like, buddies are 1-0 up. And banging out the... Uh, <laughs> they're banging the... <laughs> They're banging out the undead hard. That's pretty ridiculous. I mean, there's the mummies that started off with started the match with two ghouls cast, <laughs> essentially. Ah, so he just goes forward still. It's fair, I guess. If something crazy happens, he's he's you know he's not going to get scored on. He's got so many players. He's got such a ridiculous player advantage as well. Like, I actually like going back, but yeah, looking at it, yeah, just going forward is just better, isn't it? Yeah, the Skellington. And this guy can run around so we can punch him. Oh, he doesn't punch. Don't know how to punch and then hope that this guy could dodge to there, right? Because a 2 plus and then a 3 plus to there. And a 2, yeah, so I would have relied on him getting to there and then I would just punch for this guy. <laughs> oh, 
Yes, Lepeg. Um, if you if you fight Wood Elves, make sure they don't just beat you up. <laughs> you should be the one beating them up, and uh, that the game will be a lot easier if that happens. Yep. Bit of a comedy mega. Last Blood Bowl, isn't it? It is a dice game. And sometimes the dice absolutely kill you. Could just score here. I mean, he doesn't have to, but he could, right? Like 2 0 up, it's basically a win. But also, it's so ridiculously easy to stall in the corner. You basically have to stall in the stall in the corner here. Um, the dance of mighty blow enemies was just the choice, right? Like this was just the skill that he chose. Um, Woody's were able to take five primaries and a secondary. So he chose the Mighty Blow Dancer. Tree chose a Guard Catcher. And uh, a few people just two chose seven primaries. But I mean. Free Mighty Blow for anyone's a bit busted, isn't it? You know, present the present Nuffle Mighty Blow is pretty ridiculous. It's a pretty ridiculous present Nuffle. And it's why Woodies are ridiculous anyway, right? Like, other people, other teams, like, don't really get to stack skills on players, do they? Like, in this, you were able to stack, but you had to pay a secondary to stack a second skill on a player. Whereas, war dancers start with block, dodge, and leap all stacked on the same player, and then can just give them a fourth skill. For like a primary, it's crazy. It's crazy how good war dancers are. Absolutely crazy. And this was a very good pack for Wood Elves. I guess I should have taken Wood Elves. Looking back, looking back, I guess I should have taken Wood Elves. It's not even close. Yes, even Lucy. Yep. War dancer is absolutely. The best player in Blood Bowl. The best positional is maybe Gutter Runner, right? Because you get 0 to 4. So, um, so there's a strong argument for that. Or, I guess the Underworld Gutter Runner, right? Because it has, it has mutations on normal. Um, I took Dark Elves. Because, uh, Vamp Runner isn't in Blood Bowl 3. Chicken. <laughs> uh, but also the throw is better isn't it essentially because you can get plus two movement I guess it depends on how much you talk it depends on how where you're going with starting skills and stuff right like you know how much how much you're talking development and stuff goes into it because gutter runners can one turn out of the box and then you've got four of them and stuff it's really good but like a rookie war dancer is just insanely good and doesn't need anything ever, does it? It's just insane. It look it should be corn. I would expect corn just purely because they've been out the longest, right? So purely for like lead times being a consideration. Corn make corn have to be the most likely because they've been out the longest. If if you discount you know, ogres and snotlings, which hopefully we can with goblins and halflings coming out, then uh, corn make the most sense to me.
All right, so on turn 15, you can definitely just go now, right? In fact, so the tiebreakers here are, um, are only touchdown scored, not touchdown difference. So if you score, at least it's guaranteed that you get the touchdown diff that you get the touchdowns for for the uh, thing and like winning two one is better than winning two uh, better than winning one nil and it's maybe better than winning two nil right because if you let Alan score one now then maybe he might put out somebody who has a better matchup against you on touchdown different and touchdown scored. So it might actually be even better for Niagara to win 2-1 rather than to win 2-0. Like there's a world in which it is better for him to win 2-1 than 2-0, so that's super interesting. Mighty blow and fix go and bonehead, yeah. Um, underworld. I like stacking sidestep and two heads on the gutter if you can stack. And juggernaut on the, well, no, not juggernaut on the rat hog actually. Um, guard on the troll. And um, extra arms on the thrower. Just lean at the one turn, right, with guard and uh, guard and extra arms and Sidestep and two heads. Well, touchdown differences like is not. Touch the the primary tiebreaker is touchdowns four, not touchdowns difference. Exactly, very strange look at yeah. So there is a world in which it's better for you to win two one than two nil. Which is really weird, but it's true. Not that I think anybody will be finessing it that much. But it is kind of possible. It's a possibility that exists. Uh, it doesn't look like Alan is even getting anybody in range here. Uh, he can't actually, can he? Because zombies can only go to six, to sort of like 12. Actually, you know, he's only got the two ghouls, only got one left. So there you go. Yes, Lepeg, but what I'm saying is I'm not saying it's better to win 2-1 than 2-0, but there are situations in which case it's better. So, for example, if you think of everything else being equal in your group, and let's say your Wood Elves, and you, like, there's also, like, let's say your Wood Elves, and in your group there's, like, say, Dark Elves, Dark Elves, and Lizard Men, then beating the Lizard Men 2-1 might, might, might mean that the Lizards go through in second place, rather than the Dark Elves, thus granting you more better odds in the knockout stages because you've brought through Lizards which have a worse matchup against you than Dark Elves. <laughs> so there you go, that is the very, very, very niche situation that winning 2-1 can be better than winning 2-0. <laughs> <laughs> It is risky, yeah, it is risky. I, d I don't think anybody will finesse it that much, but it would be a possibility. It would be a possibility that somebody could. So, I mean, this is over now. <laughs> That's fair enough, right? Like, it's a World Cup. It's uh, 
World Championship. It's fair enough uh, playing something. Um, so there you go, a 2-0 win for Niaga. Congratulations to him and his Wood Elves. Commiserations to Alan and his Undead. Um, thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.